health and safety guidelines and legislations. Introduction to the module. Poor health and safety standards can lead to unnecessary legal costs, injuries and illness to the workforce. This module covers health and safety at work and the laws related to it. Topics to be covered in this module. The costs and dangers of poor health and safety. Benefits of good health and safety. Health and safety law. Criminal law. Civil law. Compensation claims. Health and Safety at Work etc. Act 1974, HSWA. Overlap of duties of some legislation. Penalties and enforcement. Improvement and prohibition notices. The employer's responsibilities. The employee's responsibilities and duties. The costs and dangers of poor health and safety. While a company can expect to lose some staff hours to sickness and unexpected personal events, greater losses can be expected when a business does not practice good health and safety protocols. It was estimated by the HSE, Health Safety Executive, that UK businesses lost 38.8 million working days between 2019 to 2029, solely due to avoidable accidents and illnesses occurring in the workplace. In the most basic terms, if an organization indirectly causes a member of the workforce to be injured, due to negligence or cost-cutting, this will influence staff morale, productivity, and employee availability. In pure business terms, a facility that has poor health and safety procedures will see productivity drop and finance affected for the following reasons. Production stops, if an accident or injury occurs, that work area will need to be evacuated, and an employee may be unable to continue their job due to injury. Compensation and prosecution, an injured employee may decide to sue the company for poor health and safety conditions, causing legal costs and further work delays. Accident Awareness the root cause for an incident must be understood and resolved before regular work continues, otherwise, a repeat incident may occur. First aid and medical treatment, an employee's welfare and health must be considered in the long term and with any lasting effects. Reputation, a serious incident, which may result in serious injuries or worse, will influence the company's standing and credibility. Impact on the employee, every company has the moral obligation to ensure the health and well-being of all its workforce. Benefits of good health and safety. The benefits of enforcing good health and safety practices are many. While some employees may grumble about the stringent procedures and processes that they must obey, this is far better than having a workforce be subjected to unnecessary danger. The most apparent benefits are safe and efficient working environments fewer accidents resulting in less paperwork and administration costs fewer chances of civil action and legal prosecutions more productivity and a protected workforce reputation for safety and larger profit margins lower insurance premiums health and safety law criminal law the legislation that governs health and safety laws in the UK is often perceived to be complex and wordy. However, it comes down to the most rudimentary acts of common sense and practical guidelines that should be in place for any designated place of work. Some of them will only apply to certain facilities or occupations. It should also be noted that there are two types of legislation associated with health and safety. The criminal legislation is written to allow the state, UK, to punish either a business or person for breaking the laws of the land. The punishment is likely to be financial, imprisonment, or a combination of the two. The verdict will be decided in a magistrate's or crown court, and a sheriff's or high court in Scotland. Civil law, compensation claims. The other legislation that should be noted when dealing with UK laws over health and safety in the workplace is that of civil legislation. Unlike criminal legislation, civil actions are not started by someone contravening the law of the land, or state law, but are instigated by an individual bringing their grievance personally to the appropriate law court. 
The purpose of civil legislation is that it allows one person to sue another representative for negligence or unnecessary risks. The aim of the plaintiff is that they receive financial compensation for their emotional or physical injuries. This is decided in a county court, or a high court, or, in Scotland, a sheriff's court or court of sessions. Health and Safety at Work etc. Act 1974, HSWA. The most recognisable piece of legislation in place to protect UK employees is known as the Health and Safety at Work etc. Act 1974. This is an Act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom, which was written with the intent that businesses and individuals are made responsible for regulating and enforcing workplace health, safety and welfare in a facility or appropriate workplace. The Act is often abbreviated and referred to as HSWA and covers occupational health and safety throughout the UK. It states that employers must provide a safe place of work and that the health and safety of their employees are always protected. To some extent, it also places some responsibility with the employees themselves, to monitor their employer and make sure they are complying with all the guidelines set out in HSWA and other relevant protocols. Overlap of duties of some legislations. In some cases, it may be that duties and primary requirements from HSWA may overlap with other recognized UK regulations. For instance, a facility that holds dangerous chemicals will need to obey not only the legislation stated in HSWA but also from COSHH, Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations 2002. This may also occur with other UK regulations, such as MHSWR. Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999, or PPEWR, Personal Protective Equipment at Work Regulations 1992. In each case of repeated or overlapped advice, the general rule is that the more specific requirements be obeyed and used. When storing dangerous substances, HSWA is likely to provide generalized instructions, whereas COSHH will be more precise in its requirements. Penalties and enforcement. Enforcement of health and safety laws and legislations is primarily the responsibility of the HSE, Health and Safety Executive, which is the UK government agency selected to deal with those matters. Where this is not appropriate, the matter falls into the hands of local authorities who will use an authorised officer to deal with the issue. This generally means that HSE representatives will investigate large buildings and facilities, hospitals, factory plants, etc. Whereas local shops and offices will be investigated by EHPs, environmental health practitioners, working on behalf of local authorities. These inspectors have legal powers to take photographs and physical samples, take charge of an accident site, gain entrance to any building. Ask employees questions. Test equipment and site materials. Improvement and prohibition notices. Once these inspectors have completed their investigations, they will prepare a report and submit the information to the relevant employer or individual. If it is decided that health and safety legislation has been ignored and the law has been broken, then further actions will take place. In minor cases, this will just consist of written advice and suggested activities. With more major infringements, the possible penalties will be extended to these possibilities. 1. Official Improvement Notice, a formal list of improvements, which the receiver will have a set time to implement. 2. Prohibition Notice, after a serious accident, all productivity and work will cease until the inspector lifts the notice. 3. Criminal proceedings. In a major case, the relevant person will be prosecuted in a court of law, which could lead to two years' imprisonment with an unlimited fine. The employer's responsibilities. In order to meet legal requirements, all employers are obliged to follow these suggestions as much as it is possible to do so. Ensure that all employees are kept safe and free from any possible harm. Provide enough training and information for them to perform their tasks safely. Ensure the workplace or facility contains no risks to health.
ensure that machinery remains in good working order and that adequate supervision is in place. Provide proper storage space and handling equipment for products and supplies. Perform regular risk assessment. Assign competent staff as health and safety representatives. Continually monitor and review all health and safety protocols in place. The employee's responsibilities and duties. An employer can successfully maintain health and safety if his employees support him. Each employee has the moral and legal duty to highlight a potentially dangerous situation or a piece of machinery that is faulty. By working with their superiors, any workplace can be kept hazard-free and environmentally friendly. Therefore, every employee, at all levels, should be prepared to follow these guidelines. Take responsibility for their own safety and never knowingly put themselves in harm's way. They must never contradict existing health and safety protocols in the workplace. Never move or interfere with equipment or space that exists solely for health and safety use. Always raise concerns with the relevant staff, when a hazardous situation arises, or existing procedures are not enough to provide the correct amount of protection to the workforce. Summary In this module, we have covered the following points. Poor health and safety standards can lead to unnecessary legal costs, as well as injuries and illness to the workforce. An injury in the workplace can result in criminal or civil proceedings being taken to court. Several recognized UK regulations are in place to help protect employees' rights in the workplace, and some requirements may overlap. Negligence in the workplace can lead to an employer facing a prison sentence and a large fine. Enforcement of health and safety legislation issues remains the responsibility of the HSE and local authorities. Employers and employees both hold the obligation to ensure that health and safety measures are fully effective in the workplace. Thank you. This is the end of this module. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.